On December 1, 2016, following the recommendations of one of Jaime Christopher's teachers, we drove to Fort Tryon Park in Upper Manhattan to visit the Met Cloisters, a museum specializing in European medieval architecture, sculpture, and decorative arts. Its early collection was built by the American sculptor, art dealer, and collector George Gray Bernard and acquired by John D. Rockefeller Jr. in 1925. These photographs depict the first Cloisters Museum erected by George Gray Barnard in 1914 at 699 Fort Washington Avenue and acquired by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 1925. Up the stairs are photographs documenting the construction of the building we are in today, which started in 1935. The Cloisters Museum and Gardens opened to the public in 1938. Much of the original collection assembled by George Gray Barnard is now in view in the galleries upstairs. The Romanesque Hall displays several doorways from different monasteries of medieval France and frescoes, all from the 11th and 12th centuries. The main artifact of that hall is the doorway from the Abbey of Montier saint jean near Dijon in Burgundy, France. This doorway was made about 1250. Since according to many legends that abbey was founded by French kings Clovis and his son Clothar, we can see their statues on both sides, presenting their characters. There are also small seated figures on each side and they represent ancestors of Virgin and Jesus, including Moses. Seen on the tympanos shows the coronation of the Virgin in heaven. The temptation of Jesus and angels supporting the Lamb of God from a church of Erondo near Un City. Lion, fresco transferred to canvas from a room above the chapter house of the Benedictine Monastery of San Pedro de Arlanza near Burgos. Also from the San Pedro de Arlanza Benedictine Monastery near Burgos is this dragon passant fresco transferred to canvas. The Benedictine Monastery of St. Michel de Cuxa located at the foot of Mount Canigou in the northeast Pyrenees, was founded in 878. In 1791, Cox's monks departed in the wake of the French Revolution, and much of the monastery's stonework was subsequently dispersed. Part of this cloister survives at the monastery, which once again houses a community of monks. Other elements purchased by George Gray Barnard and brought to the United States placed around the Coxa Cloister. The chapter house was the daily meeting place in most European monasteries and convents. The location next to Coxa Cloister preserves the relationship of the chapter house to the cloisters in a typical medieval monastic plan. The architecture of the chapter house features typical Romanesque characteristics, notably the rounded arches, thick walls, small windows, and heavy rib vaults. Door mounts possibly from the 11th century.
The apps from the Church of San Martin at Fuentidueña in Spain dominates this gallery space. The Church of San Martin probably functioned as the chapel for an adjacent castle. The plan, a long nave without projecting transepts or side aisles, is common for small Romanesque churches in Segovia. Also typical of the Romanesque period is the sober, thick wall construction, interrupted only by small windows and the rounded arches. An unusual feature of these apse is the large scale of the figures on piers. Saint Martin, patron of this church, is seen on the left, and the angel Gabriel's Annunciation to Virgin is depicted on the right. The crucifix is believed to be of Spanish origin, possibly from the 11th century. In this fresco, the Magi approach the Virgin and Child, not in a manger, but enthroned in majesty and in company of archangels. Lion relief tramples a dragon. The miracle of Christ raising Lazarus from the dead and the temptation of Christ by the devil. Spain 1120-1140 Thorway in Carrara Marble, circa 1175 from the church of San Leonardo al Frigido near Massa. On the lintel above is Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. The monastery of St. Gilliam le Desert, from which this cloister comes, was founded in 804. St. Gilliam thrived as a pilgrim's destination on the road to the shrine of St. James, Santiago de Compostela, in northern Spain. Elements from the choir of the Church of Notre Dame du Bourg near Bordeaux form the right wall and part of the left of the cloister's Langon Chapel. Imposing and spare, this architectural stonework evokes a monastic ambience, the austere sobriety of which is mitigated here in typical medieval fashion by animated, sometimes even playful, figural sculpture and richly colored stainless glass from other regions of France. As in all medieval churches, the altar is the focal point of worship. This sculpture represents the throne of wisdom, in which Mary serves as a throne for Christ, who in turn embodies divine wisdom. This is one of only a few Romanesque sculptures in wood from Burgundy to survive. The early Gothic hall has reopened this summer after a five-year renovation. Completely refurbished 13th century limestone windows and two dozen panels of newly conserved and reinstalled stained glass, primarily from the 13th and 14th centuries, are among the objects on view. The Gothic chapel contains four tombs from the Urgell family of Catalonia and three tombs from the Belpuic de las Avillans monastery in northern Spain. The Bonfond cloisters are a composite from a number of monasteries from the region, in large part from a late 12th century Cistercian abbey at Bonfond in Comingus, southwest of Toulouse in southern France. The four walkways of the Bonfond cloisters surround a medieval herb garden. The Tria cloister was originally part of a convent of Carmelite nuns in southwestern France. The original abbey, except for the church, was destroyed by Huguenots in 1571. 
The three cloisters surround a rectangular garden which hosts around 80 species of plants and contains a tall limestone waterfall at the center. The waterfall is a composite of two late 15th to early 16th century French structures. Given by John D. Rockefeller Jr. in 1938, the Unicorn Tapestries are the cloister's best-known masterpiece. Their history, however, is incomplete and their meaning much debated. The Hunt of the Unicorn, a mythical one-horned beast, resembles a stag hunt with men and dogs in pursuit an attempted escape across the stream, an agonizing climatic fight and the hunter's victorious return to the castle. Additional scenes are unique to the lore of the unicorn, his stop at a stream to purify water, his fatal entrapment by a maiden and his captivity. The Beaupart Gallery takes its name from the six large stained glass windows that come from the Carmelite Church of Beaupart on the Rhine near Koblenz that date from 1440-46. Also at the Beaupart Gallery is this alabaster altar, built for Archbishop Don Dalau the Moor Iservelo, whose arms are held by angels at the far left and right of the altar. The workability of the alabaster allowed the sculptor to create scenes full of charming detail, notably to the left and right of the central, rather static scene of the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. At the far left is Saint Martin on horseback, sharing his cloak with a beggar, followed by angels watching at the saint's bedside as Christ appears to him in a dream. The two right panels present Saint Thecla listening to the preaching of St. Paul and being miraculously saved from fire. <music> Medieval reliquaries often took the form of the body parts they were created to contain. Bust reliquaries for the skulls of saints were placed on or near altars and, by the late Middle Ages, were assembled in large numbers in some church sanctuaries. This candlestick was used every year from the vigil on the eve of Easter until the celebration of the Ascension 40 days later. It is decorated with prophets and Adam and Eve in the top register, Saint Benedict and five Franciscan saints in the middle, and six of the twelve apostles of Jesus at the bottom. Altarpiece with the Virgin and Child and Saints, circa 1470, from the castle chapel of Bergweiler, near Hellbronn in Germany. Lectern in the form of an eagle. The eagle's wings support a book rack. The bird's claws hold a dragon, an allusion to the words victory over evil. The figures attached to the sculpture include Christ, Saint Peter, and the Virgin and Child with the three Magi. These ewers long have been thought to be the pair mentioned in the 1526 and 1585 inventories of the Order of the Teutonic Knights. The enameled and painted wild men are heraldic supporters, 
but also can be understood as symbols of virility and procreation. This appears to be the only intact devotional triptych to survive that is decorated with mother of pearl plaques in open work relief. The Merode room adorned by beautiful stained glass windows houses the traditionally known Merode altarpiece. The altarpiece was so called after the Merode family that owned it during the 19th century. The Annunciation Triptych is probably the finest early Netherlandish work in New York and in North America, and it has become Camping's best known work, helped by the undoubted charm of the domestic setting. The late Gothic hall houses the famous Palm Easel, Palm Donkey in English, the statue of Jesus on a donkey, mounted on a wheeled platform, which was part of Palm Sunday processions in many German-speaking regions until the Reformation. Also on display at the late Gothic hall, are these three kings that, along with a seated virgin and child, formed the central shrine of a large altarpiece at the Cistercian Abbey at Lichtenthal near Baden-Baden in Germany. At the end of our tour, we drove to the nearby New Leaf restaurant for a bite to eat. <laughs> 